Good morning, this is Dr. Ajay, ENT Assistant Professor from Chennai and now we are going to see an interesting case of an invasive fungal sinusitis which occurred post-COVID scenario and it appeared as a case of mixed cyanonasal fungal infection. This is a 50 year old male, he was uncontrolled diabetes and uh, he presented with COVID symptoms 3 weeks back. Now he presented in our OPD with severe pain along his left side of the face and on clinical examination we did an endoscopy, it was perfectly normal except that we could see some first chain secretions along the posterior end of the nasal cavity from the middle meatus area. We did an MRI and the MRI showed some amount of some inflammatory tissue. It was evidence like a fungal sinusitis and we proceeded with the functional endoscopic sinus surgery to check out and for the removal of the fungal material. And this is an endoscopic picture as I said, the, all the middle turbinate, the inferior turbinate was normal but we could see some inflammatory contents along the middle meatus area extending up to the coina. And this is the other side of the nose which is perfectly normal, there was nothing involved. We could see the goyana is normal, only there was a secretions along that side. So we, we found a conca bullosa in our uh, MRI picture, so we did a conca plasty. Uh, now we are doing some infiltration along the middle turbinate and along the uncinate process. And we did a conca plasty and now we have started doing with the first, that is the first step we are doing uncinectomy. And we could see by using a ball probe and just opening up the maxillary sinus ostium. We could see some inflammatory contents, we could see some uh, inflammatory, some pus secretions coming out from the maxillary sinus ostium. And then obviously we did a wide middle, uh, wide middle medial antrostomy. So we just with the, using a backbiter, using a backbiter we removed the uncinate process and the, the entire uncinate process was removed uh, the, over the entire segment. And then we did a wide middle medial antrostomy as shown in the picture. And now after doing a wide middle medial antrostomy, we could see where we did a thorough washing again and we could see some inflammatory contents, inflammatory polypoidal contents present within the contents of the maxillary sinus. See, we could see the entire maxillary sinus is filled with some polypoidal contents and we removed that polypoidal contents and, and we could see the uh, necrotic contents and necrotic fungal material along the floor and now we are removing the, we are removing that polypoidal and the necrotic contents from the maxillary sinus the maxillary sinus and once we remove it and now we are just cleaning it we are giving a thorough washing there and once we remove it, remove that we could see the contents which are necrosed along the floor of the maxillary sinus which were indicative of our fungus so initially this is the case of early mucormycosis we couldn't find anything in our endoscopy but we depended on our MRI picture so in our MRI we found out some fungal sinusitis so what we did is we did a MMA, a middle medial antrostomy, we just opened up and we could see some fungal contents in present along the floor of the maxillary sinus, not exactly in the content area. So we did, we, we did an inferior turbinectomy, we did a, uh, we did a modified Denkers approach kind of thing and we could, we removed the entire medial wall of the maxilla and we could see some white, some fungal material along the contents of the maxilla and this is the posterior end of the inferior turbinate and this is the fungal material along the floor, along the floor and the medial wall of the maxilla, we could see that the medial wall of the maxilla has been necros, has been necros and these are the fungal contents, whatever we are removing is the fungal material and that blackish eschar, the blackish material, this is not a clear cut picture of a mucor, the advanced mucor, this is an early stage of mucor, so see we, I am just pulling out that medial wall of the maxilla which has been breaking like a necro, necrotic contents. And we could see that black, blackish edge curve over that area which is the early stage, which is the early finding presenting with the mucor. So ideally what we did is we did a thorough washing. So what we are showing is that is that fungal contents, fungal contents present along the floor of the maxilla. Now we are seeing up to the floor of the maxilla. So ideally what we want to do is never stop only with the middle medial antrostomy. So we need to do a wide medial maxillectomy wide medial maxillectomy or at least do a wide middle medial antrostomy to see up to the floor of the maxilla. So uh, ideally what the, they will prefer is we can do a modified and denkers approach so we can see the entire entire floor of the maxilla, entire floor and the entire contents of the maxilla so that we, we know that the mucor mostly arises from the palate area along the floor of the maxilla. So you see here the entire mucosa from this maxilla has been has been there, are, there there seems to be some necrotic area over the floor of the maxilla okay so now now we are we have removed the contents from this maxillary area and this is a final picture what we see and again still we could see some fungal debris that 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 fungal necrotic debris 
occurring along this floor and the medial wall of the maxilla and that is what we are removing this is the fungal content but still we want a big access to be done so what we do want to do is we want to further remove that medial wall of the maxilla here we could see that maxilla we, we, have, we, we could see some contents are present still along the floor so with the, we didn't have a burr at the time so with the chisel and hammer we just removed that medial wall of the maxilla Already the medial wall of the maxilla, it means a bit necrotic, uh, it means some osteolytic involvement is there. So we could easily remove that medial wall of the maxilla and, uh, the, uh, uh, and now this is the picture of the maxillary sinus and we could see uh, we just proceeded with the ethmoidal area. We just removed the bulla ethmoidalis and once we remove the bulla ethmoidalis, see here we could see a, we could see a necrotic contents along this, along this ethmoidal area. So now, once we just go into the ethmoid, once we just go into the ethmoid, we could see the polypoidal thickening, polypoidal mucosal thickening seen along the ethmoidal area and the bones were necrotic. So ideally, we just removed that polypoidal contents from this ethmoid area and, and the posterior ethmoid and the remaining part was normal. This is the remaining part of the posterior ethmoid which was perfectly normal, there was no involvement there and we just removed that uh, inflamed mucosa and the necrotic contents over the wall of the ethmoidal area. So this is the final picture, we did a sphenoid also, this is the final picture of our ethmoid. We could see the lateral, we could see the lamina papricia over the side uh, which was normal and this is uh, until this time we just used a 0 degree endoscope and now we use a 70 degree endoscope to see up to the floor and uh, to our surprise we could see that there were some other contents along the floor and along the roof of the maxilla that is along the floor of the orbit and that is what we are removing now we are removing the necrotic contents from the floor of the orbit floor of the orbit so the the so that so that we need to clear it if we leave it uh, leave it as such again this may go and involve the orbital contents at a later stage so we need to do a proper clearance of the entire floor of the orbit also so uh, these are the necrotic contents which are being removed from the floor of the orbit and now we are going to the spinae sinus and we did a Spinae sinus osteotomy and, uh, and this is the wide osteotomy being done and uh, we could see the spinae sinus was normal, even MRI it was normal and so we just made a clearance of the secretions from the maxilla, ethmoid, frontal and the spinae and this is the final picture which we could see, this is the final picture, uh, we are just removing still few other contents, few other necrotic contents from the floor, we know that we could see that there are some whitish contents along the floor of the maxilla, so that is next we want to remove we are removing the contents from the floor of the maxilla see even if we remove, leave out a small content from this floor along the palate area that is going to create an issue again we can start with the antifungals but but uh, we, uh, if possible we need to make an entire clearance of the necrotic content so this is the final picture this post medial uh, post we have removed the medial wall of the maxilla and this is the ethmoid area and that is a lamina papricia which is being shown. We removed the necrotic contents from the lamina papricia also. And this is the entire area. We could see the palate is normal. The patient presented early to us. So the palate was normal. There was no involvement of the palate. And we sent the uh, material for the KOH mount and for fungal culture. The KOH mount showed features of branching septate hyphae, which were features of aspergillosis, but histopathology came like a necrotic content scene, which was similar to that of a mucormycosis. The patient was started on antifungus and the patient is on follow-up with the antifungus. Thank you.